Hi, in this video, oh, it went too fast there. Hi, in this video, we're going to talk about uh, subnetting IPv6, part of the chapter on global unicast addressing, and show you really how easy this is. <clears throat> so, subnetting in IPv6. Can you count in hex? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F. Uh, then you can subnet because that's basically all there is to it. So let's say we have a slash 48 and we have a 16-bit subnet ID. Here we're showing it with all four hexadecimal digits. Uh, all you need to do is increment the subnet ID in hex. It's really that easy. Uh, here it is showing it in the compressed format, at least for one of those subnets. But it basically really is that easy. If I was going to continue showing you all of that, uh, the subnet ID here, we started at all zeros, we made our way, you know, nine, then A, B, C, D, E, F, then one zero. Remember, this is hex, right? So one, 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 two, what, one F. So one, two, one, three, one, four, one, five, one, six, one, seven, one, eight, one, nine, one, A, one, B, all the way one, F to two, zero. So we're counting this column here, zero through F, and then we're changing the next digit, so two to three here. So it's really that easy, just, just counting in hex. That's subnetting in IPv6. It really is that easy. Okay, but I'm going to show you a couple of other things while we're here. So first of all, how does the ISP see us? So let's say we have a slash 48, 2001 DB8 cafe slash 48. So this 48 bits is how our ISP and the rest of the internet sees us. Internally, we subnet any way we want. And typically, highly recommended, except in rare circumstances, we just use slash 64s. So again, use that subnet ID, that part between the global routing prefix and 64 bits for the interface ID, and you just make that your subnet ID. In our case, one, two, three, four. It's that easy. Okay, so it is highly recommended not to subnet into this 64-bit interface ID. So use a slash 64. Your subnet ID will be anywhere between your global routing prefix and your 16-bit subnet ID. The only exception would be for network infrastructure, router to router links or router to switch, multi-layer switch links. Um, and then even then, slash 64 is really okay. But networks with end systems attached, your LANs, slash 64s. Okay, so what if I wanted to subnet beyond my subnet ID into this interface ID? So now I'm only gonna have a 48-bit interface ID. You definitely don't wanna do this for your LANs, but I'll show you a case where you may wanna do it. But let's take an example. We have a slide, we decided to have a slash 80, okay? So what does that, what does that look like? Okay, so here's our global routing prefix. Now we have, instead of a 16-bit subnet ID, we have 32 bits. So we've actually shortened our interface ID by one hex hextet. So this, let's say, was part of the interface ID when, you know, we're slash 64. Okay, but we've changed it to a slash 80. So this becomes part of our prefix, our network prefix. Okay, so what would our, so there's our prefix. So here's our subnet IDs. It's again, that easy. We just count in hex. That's all there is to it. Okay, so what we've been doing is subnetting on a nibble boundary. Make it easy. So slash 64 to a slash 68. In this case, we've gone, we've actually subnetted over one more hextet into this interface ID here. So it used to be 64 bits, now it's 60-bit interface ID, slash 68. So this 
this digit here used to be part of the interface ID. It's now part of the uh, subnet. Again, all we did here is, all we do is take these five hexadecimal digits and increment them by one in hex. Okay. But, so there's our slash 68. And that's easy. Anytime we submit on a nibble boundary, it makes our life easy. But what happens if I want to submit within a nibble? Okay, so a slash 70. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, what that means is it gives us these kinds of subnets. Looks a little strange. We're not, we're incrementing, but not by one. Okay, really we're incrementing by four in this case. A slash 70 means the the left two bits are for the subnet ID, and the right two bits remain zero for the prefix. That's going to be part of the interface ID. So what we have here is uh, zero. So part is zero zero. If we're, as we're incrementing this, we're incrementing this bit here zero 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 one. So that gives us the four. One zero 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 gives us the eight. One one zero zero gives us the C. So there's a pattern to it. Actually, it's not a hard pattern, but there's really very few times you even have to worry about do this. So why 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 create more trouble for yourself? We have plenty of IPv6 address space. There should be seldom a need to do this. Uh, you should be fine with just subnetting on a nibble boundary. So. Do you ever need to really go beyond 64 bits in the interface ID? So up to now, we've been saying slash 64 and uh, make this the subnet ID. And all of this over here would be the interface ID. Okay, we'll talk more about the reasons for this when we get into Slack. But that's typically, this is the host portion on the right. Okay. Uh, there is a case that some people feel they want to, to uh, go into the interface ID actually quite a bit. And uh, our, there's an RFC on this, and that's using a slash 127 for inter-router links. Think of this like in the uh, IPv4, we'd use a slash 30. So we'd only have one address here and one address here and an address for the network and another one for the broadcast, four addresses. By the way, you can also do a slash 31 uh, on point-to-point -point links in IPv4 that just gives you two addresses. But let's get back to IPv6. So a slash 27 actually leaves only one bit for the, uh, the two uh, interface addresses on our two routers. And that's all we need, one bit, because a zero and a one. Okay, so this was helped to uh, take care of things like something called a ping pong attack and neighbor cache exhaustion issue, things you can read up on if you're interested, but there's also other mitigation techniques for both. So you really don't need to do this slash 127. But let's take a look at it anyway, okay? So if you want to do this, what you should do is reserve a separate slash 64 for every 120 slash 127. In other words, don't worry about doing VLSM like we do in IPv4 to conserve address space. Let me show you what we mean. Okay, so for each slash, seven, uh, slash 127, we're gonna have a slash six, separate slash 64. What does that mean? Here's uh, some, some slash 64s, okay? F000, F001, F002, F003. Okay, each one of these slash 64s gives us a 64-bit interface ID, 18 quintillion devices. But we're gonna submit into this. And let's take this F000, and let's just, we're just gonna, gonna use the whole thing, all the zeros. The only thing we're gonna change is this bit at the end. Okay. So we're just going to use a zero here for 
a zero bit for one device and a one bit for the other device. Okay, but we're, and that's the only two hosts that we're gonna use on this entire slash 64. So we're basically taking a subnet of 18 quintillion possibilities, okay? Or an interface ID that would normally give us 18 quintillion possibilities. We're gonna just use this whole thing, F000, for nothing more than just those two bits, that's it, okay? And what I mean is, so let's put this here. This is another uh, 16 bits here. We're w basically wasting everything from here to here. So 16 bits here, okay? And then basically all we're gonna use is this last portion here, modifying the last bit. But we're not gonna use anything else here. And we're only gonna use this slash 64 for this, just like we would a regular slash 64, but we're only going to say, hey, it's a slash 27, not a slash 64. Let me show you some more what I mean by this. Okay, let's say if I wanna do another subnet, okay? I'm just gonna use another slash 64. That's all I'm gonna do, okay? So for every two interface IDs or host addresses, I'm going to use an entire slash 64, allocate that. I'm just gonna subnet it. Notice that I'm subnetting as these as slash 27s. What that means is only this last bit, point right there, is the interface ID. The rest of it all belongs to the subnet. Okay, but you know what? This can be a little confusing because this looks like this, the network address. Okay, matter of fact, we don't even need this zero here or here. So basically what we're doing is, remember in IPv6, we can use an all zeros, I'll do all zeros, interface ID or host address, host portion of the address, that's fine. You can have all zeros, okay? But that can look a little confusing. So here's a way, if you really wanna do this, what I would recommend doing is use something like the last four bits, preface it here with 101. Why do that? Because a zero here, a zero bit, you have zero and one, as your bits, that gives you A and B. One zero one zero is A, one zero one one is B. So that way you're using A and B. So this is the A and this is the B. Okay. And just do that for each subnet. Here we go again. Okay. So A, B, now you can't just choose any two values here. You gotta be a little careful. Let me show you what I mean by that. So uh, if I used one, zero, zero, okay, I can use eight and nine, okay? Cause let me show you one, zero, 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 you can see that is eight to the zero bit. I made this a one here. I don't know if you can, hopefully you can see that. Uh, a one, that would be one, zero, zero, one, or a nine. So that's fine. The other possibility, as we already mentioned, is I could use one, zero, one, and put a zero, or one, and that gives me A or B. What I'm getting at is you cannot mix and match these two. I couldn't use a nine, and an A, because if you look at this, a nine is actually one, zero, one, one. Okay, so we couldn't use that. And I couldn't match that with an A because A would be uh, one, zero, one, zero. So, uh, oh, messed this up here. <laughs> nine would be one, zero, zero, one. There we go. So they would have be actually in different subnets. This is one zero zero, this is one zero one. So actually these belong to two different subnets. So you have to match them up 
correctly. Okay, uh, so uh, this is just showing if we were to use the one and the, the zero and the one, here's our different subnets, all the way to FFFF. And here you can see we're just using a zero or a one for the first and second host. Okay, an IPv6 address implant. So first of all, an IPv4, uh, we use a lot of our, a lot of our addressing plan, unfortunately, centers around conserving address space, managing the limited space using VLSM slash 30s or slash 31s for point to point links. And IPv6 addre address conservation is not an issue. So our addressing plan can be one that actually makes sense, is easy to use and easy to manage. And there's a lot of different uh, articles and best practices on this. This is NANOG, uh, best current operational practice on IPv6 subnetting. You can Google that. It's from a while back. Cisco has an IPv6 addressing guide. Oh, I just noticed who uh, wrote this. Uh, Chris Grundeman, good guy. Um, anyway, uh, never noticed that before. That's funny. Okay, addressing plan, RIPE, NCC, they're one of the regional internet registries. And I also point you to a book a friend of mine wrote on, on exactly all about IPv6 addressing plan. But before we get there, I want to mention something. There's a cool little tool out there that you can get from uh, GitHub or any number of places, which is IPv6 Gen. So you can download it. It's written in Perl. Okay. Uh, so uh, let me show you how it works. So here I have it running on my Mac. So uh, it's written in Perl. So I say ipv6gen.pl. That's just the program itself. So you need to be able to be able to run Perl. And then this is pretty cool. So this is my my network with my global routing prefix. And then this is how I want to subnet it. No slash there just 64. So for example, this slash 48, give me the subnet in slash 64 subnet. So it listed all 65,536. I'm not showing it to you here, but it goes ahead and lists it for you. Show you another example. What if I say, give me this slash 48, but subnet it using a 52 bits or slash 52. So here we can see, here's our slash 48, and we're just using the, the next four bits is our subnet ID. Gives us 16 subnets. What if I have a slash 52 and subnet and 50 slick? So I'm actually 52. Anyway, you can play around with this. It's actually quite cool. So again, this is your global routing prefix, and this is what you've decided for your subnet ID. Now, typically you're gonna use slash 64s, okay? So, uh, but this is just to give you an idea how the tool works. Okay, here's actually, what if we had a slash 60, we slash 64 and I wanted to borrow another four bits and, sh and for slash 64 and do a slash 68. It even works within the nibble. So here it's showing us that what if I have a slash 64 and I want to submit it in using a slash 70. So here we can see, and again, look at the pattern, 048C, then 101418, 1C, 20242828, 2C. But what's happening here is why we have this weird pattern is remember, as we talked, to, we talked about before, for this one here, zero, 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 this first one here, this zero here, if we break it out in binary, uh, we have uh, zero, zero is part of the network and zero, one is part of the uh, interface. Yeah. So uh, Anyway, this would give us interface IDs one, two, three, for example. All right, anyway, avoid subnetting in on the nibble. You really don't need to be doing that. 
I wanted to mention a book by a friend of mine, Tom Co Coffey, IPv6 Address Planning. He wrote an entire book on just, it's a small book, an O'Reilly book, very good book on all the ways that, that you can easily manage your IPv6 address planning. And actually, I believe he talks about the IPv6 gen as well. Very easy tool. So if you have, you get a chance, download this little tool and have a little fun with it. Makes IPv6 address subnetting really easy, as if it's not easy enough, which it is. All right, it really is that easy. Most of what the most 99% of what you needed to know was in that first slide about just incrementing by one in hex.